comforting. Of course, we got it, Amy. Yeah. So we've been going through Advent words. There's some Hebrew, and um, we're going to go get into Greek words tonight, too, and some of those key words in Advent. Um, and tonight's word is love. Oh. And we're going to start in maybe a place where some of you don't expect to start. So we're going to start in the book of Leviticus. Yes. Leviticus chapter 19. So um, Leviticus chapter 19, a lot of Leviticus has different rules within it. There's also some stories embedded within Leviticus itself. And in chapter 19, God is speaking to Moses and says to Moses, speak to everybody and tell them this. And so Moses is the intermediary here. And um begins going through some rules of how to behave within a community with one another and lays down those rules. Now, one of the things about laws and rules in, in this period is there's no distinction between social rules and religious rules and sanitation rules and all of that's all in one. Because remember, even the way that they understand the body themselves, everything's related with one. Um, there's no distinction between um, just different sects of this is secular, this is religious. It's all, all tied in together. And so we have these different rules um, beginning. You shall be holy for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall. And then it goes on to some rules that maybe you're familiar with have heard in the Ten Commandments. You shall reveal your mother and father. You shall keep my Sabbaths. I am the Lord your God. You shall not turn to idols or make cast images for yourselves. I am the Lord your God. When you offer a sacrifice of well-being to the Lord, offer it in such a way that is acceptable on in your behalf. It shall be eaten on the same day you offer it or on the next day. And anything left over until the third day shall be consumed in fire. So leftovers, not more than two days. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you've got to burn it. Um, Sounds reasonable. <laughs> <laughs> if it's eaten on the third day, it is an abomination. It will not be acceptable. So it continues on with further rules. So we're going to skip ahead, though, to Leviticus chapter 19, verse 18. What is it? 18. Oh. <clears throat> I can read it. Yeah, thank you. Never seek revenge or hold a grudge towards your relatives. You must love your neighbor as you love yourself. I am Yahweh. Others from other translations. You shall not take revenge or bear a grudge against any of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. Pretty much, pretty much what mine says as well. And we've got in here, we've got the word love. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And the word behind that is ahava. Um, that's the Greek word, or the Hebrew word, I'm sorry, um, for love. And remember, we talked about ahava uh, before because it's used in the Shema. Are you spelling it again? Right. It's A-H-A-V-A-H. So you shall ahava your neighbor as yourself. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And remember when we looked at this word ahava in the Shema and other places, the word for love, this Hebrew word, it's a, it is a feeling, but it's also more than a feeling. It's also an action. It embodies more than just our emotions. Um, it's a commitment and it is an act of obedience as well. Um, and not obedience, maybe in the same way that in English we use obedience. It's not like I told you to do that, so just do it. Yeah. It's 
because that's not how God works in the Bible. God more often speaks with the people and gives reasons behind things too. And it's because the people understand the will of God that they follow God. So it's that type of obedience where the, out of your deep understanding and appreciation, you would love, you would ahava out of that. And it, it means in this ahava, um, which comes out in 18, um, you shall ahava your neighbor as yourself, do not take vengeance or bear a grudge, that you're seeking the other's greatest good, that you're uplifting others, seeking the well-being of another person. So we've got that this Hebrew word, ahava, and, um, and that carries us throughout the Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. But we've got, that's this written word. So we've got in Jesus's time, they would be having these Hebrew words on the scrolls and um, learning ancient Hebrew, but they're speaking Aramaic. And so um, we've got another word, the Aramaic word for love is rach, rachma. Oh boy. Rachma is the, <laughs> the oh, square of the federal. Um, <laughs> so, R A K H M A H. Rachma. So, we've got this word for love in Aramaic. So, this is what's being spoken in Jesus's time. But we have in the New Testament, it's being written in Greek. So we've got um, these this word ahava in Hebrew. We have their actual spoken language with rachma. And then we've got the, some Greek words, which there's more than one word being used for love. In the Bible, we've got agape, <coughs> agapo, agapao, and phileo. So we've got these, two of them are related with each other. Um, well, there's also Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Yep, like Philadelphia. It comes out <laughs> of that. Exactly. Oh, that's right. <laughs> yes. So we have all these different words, and think about um, sometimes it's hard for us to separate if you grew up in religious circles. Um, the way that we understand love is impacted a lot by the way that we have heard scriptures and the way that we've heard spoken about God. But if you think about, if you were to separate how you understand the word love from general culture and what you've learned about love from religion and faith, mm -hmm. would you find any distinction between that? Hmm. And what if so? What where if not? That's fine. But if so, what distinction went, might you find? Are we talking about people? Yeah, it could be people. If you say, <laughs> say like I love this food. Yeah. You're talking about generally? Yeah, well, that could be. Yeah, to love a food, kind of love at a superficial level. Right, right. Sometimes when I think about pop culture, I think about like dis like love expressed in Disney movies. Mm -hmm. Like which is some of the old ones, especially, is pretty superficial. Right. Like they right. see each other and they just like love how they look. Love at first sight. Live happily ever after. Yeah. <laughs> they only have so much time. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, hour and a half. That's it. That's it. Love. It's such a complex word. It is. I mean, it can be very. Oh, I mean, here we're using it in a more hold, you know, rather than just a feeling, it's a, it leads to action. Right. As you said, which would be make sense if you love a person, you would treat them generally in a certain way, right? Hmm. So we've got these Greek writers who are writing the New Testament 
they're writing about a religion that's not a Greek religion, mm. but they're writing it in Greek. And so they're trying to find words oh. to express this concept of love that's in this Hebrew religion in a, using Greek words. Hmm. And so um, they, the main word and root of it is the agape, that you've probably heard. Mm -hmm. And that word is being used throughout the Bible, but it's not being used necessarily in the way that Greeks would be using it, because agape is not a common word for love in Greek. Uh, that it's it's not used very often. It's would be used for like the highest form of love in Greek, but it's not how you normally would talk about love in standard classical Greek. But it's the dominant word in the Bible in the New Testament. Hmm. That's being so used. what do you mean the highest form? What did they use it for? So they would use it like the highest or most noble form of love. Oh. Um, like for oh, a person look up any oh that's okay i should have looked up a greek example yeah it's been used in like classic like more greek. than like more than just like love people. between people okay um we're talking but about like total devotion oh, okay go ahead Luis. love of love of country love of other things besides human love yeah we use it in that way for, yeah. for a few yeah. How do we describe that? How do we define that kind of love of something else, non-human? Non right. Well, and agape would be even, maybe even deeper than that. Um, so it's this word that's being used. And then to complicate it a little further, the New Testament writers are using this word agape, um, which is a Greek word, but they're using it in the Hebrew sense of the word. Because remember, they're, they're, when they're speaking about love, the relationship with God, or the love that God commands, they're <clears throat> speaking in Aramaic, rachma, rachma, and but, but they're pulling it from the Hebrew understanding of ahava. So we have within agape, this Greek word in the New Testament, we actually have the concept of ahava, embed it within it okay uh so let's let's flip yeah. forward to matthew isn't isn't agape that like the um the form of love to achieve a common good for all type of concept yep yeah. so, yeah. so in the in the bible so it's the way it's used within the bible and we're going to look at examples of how it's being used but um, one of the best ways I've heard it described, it's like to seek another's greatest good would be as how agape is used in the Bible. Okay. Like almost self-sacrificial? Yep, a little bit of self-sacrificial. Um, but there's also a fulfillment Without being dark in, about it. Yeah. Yeah, there's a fulfillment in seeking another's yes. greatest good too. Yeah. So let's look at Matthew chapter 5. <laughs> And we're looking at 43, verse 43. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be children of your creator in heaven, for God makes the sun rises on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the righteous and on the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? So the word underneath this is, um, uh, so agape is the, the noun. Um, the word that's underneath here is related to agape. It's agapao, um, which is the verb uh, for love in Greek. Agapo. Okay. Agapo. That's the verb. Yep. It's A-G-A-P-A-O. Oh. A -G -A -P -A -O. Okay. 
A G A P A. Oh, I've never heard of that word before. Agapao. Agapao. Which which is interesting because we've got in Greek we've got this noun and we have a verb. Yeah, that's being used. And um they're used about equally in the New Testament, the noun and the verb. Mm -hmm. It seems like the the verbs used more often in the gospels and then the nouns used more often in the letters. Oh, okay. Huh. I don't I don't know why. That's kind of weird. Yeah. I, maybe a Greek scholar would know yeah. have a theory on that, but I thought that was kind of interesting. That is interesting. Huh. But because it's a verb, we have within this like not only um do we have this word for love that can come but it's it's actually a verb so it's like emphasizing the action of loving um, and so that that one you you shall love your neighbor which is not just you shall have feelings of care towards your neighbor okay no in in greek it's leaning heavily on this ahava so you shall love your neighbor you shall um you shall like act in such a way that you seek your neighbor's greatest good at all times. Right. Um, that's what it is to love. You. Whether you like them or not, whatever you yeah. feel about them. That's a selfless love. <laughs> you shall um, agape, ag agapao, your neighbor. Um, so you shall love your enemies. So even those that, which doesn't say you shall like your enemies, and and it's it's this act it's active love that you shall mm -hmm. actively um, seek the well being of right. your enemies. Yeah. And then it goes on into this forty six. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Um, which I think is interesting. Like if you if you live your life in such a way that you uplift the well-being of others and they uplift the well-being of you what reward do you have that it's not just that we shall uplift those who make us feel good or who advance our own lives mm -hmm. not just that feeling but even the actions that others give to us mm -hmm. but that we shall actively seek out mm -hmm. even those who may not uplift us sure. too Let's jump forward a little bit in Matthew 1919. And we've got this Aga, Aga Pao again. Matthew 1919. Start in 18. We've got, he said to them, which one? So it's this before this. Um, they, they're they asking, what are the commandments? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother. Also, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm. Jesus here is referring back to Leviticus chapter 19. Oh. that that we just read together and um so that that part in leviticus that chapter 19 um starts to become even more important as we go through this and it is leaning again on that ahava here to love your neighbor as yourself and we see that as we jump forward even further so Go to 22 in Matthew, mm -hmm. verse 37. So starting in 36, um, mm -hmm. the lawyers are asking a question to test Jesus. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to them, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. Where have you heard that before? The Shema. The Shema. The Shema. Ah. In Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. This is the greatest in first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Where have you heard that one? 
Leviticus. Leviticus, 19. <laughs> and earlier here. <laughs> the two most important um, books that Jesus leans on, these two most com important commandments, Deuteronomy and Leviticus. Um, but notice there was, we skipped reading some of the laws in Leviticus yeah. because it is an endless list when it you really read through them <laughs> of laws in Leviticus. Everything from from you shall love the your neighbor as yourself to don't put marks on dead bodies. <laughs> like the, the whole span of Very that. specific. And Jesus is pulling out what are the two things that upon which everything else hinges. And it's these two, okay. the Shema from Deuteronomy and um, to love your neighbor as yourself from Leviticus. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And again, love here is that verb the verb for version of agape the what version the verb the for, verb version mm -hmm. the agapo we see that in matthew we can go to mark next mark 12. Um, verses Mark chapter 12, verses 30 to 31. Will somebody read that one? Oh, this is the NIV of 30. Uh, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And 31. The second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There are no, there is no commandment greater than these. So again, we get in Mark, this is Jesus referring back to the Shema mm -hmm. and to that commandment in Leviticus. And then we can go to Luke chapter 10, verse 27. And we'll see it again. This is in all of these synoptic gospels. Yeah. Somebody read um, 27. No, just verse 27. Okay. He answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And again, this word for love is the agapao, the verb form of agape um, within. So in all of these synoptic gospels, we ha are having the same um, word for love. And it's, it's being repeated almost word for word from the Old Testament, from the Shema and from Leviticus, um, those two commandments from there. Then there's another verb, another word for love <laughs> that the Greeks are using too. And that gets introduced and used in the Bible as well. So we go back to Matthew chapter six. So the Greeks had more words for love um, in the Hebrew and in Aramaic and in English. Yeah. So they get um they're loving people they're very loving people <laughs> or they like to separate their love one yeah, or the maybe other that's it <laughs> <laughs> into different words will somebody read um chapter six verse five of matthew of matthew yeah i can read it and when you pray don't behave like the hypocrites they love to pray standing up in the synagogues and on street corners for people to see them. The truth is they have received their re reward in full. So this word for love, loving to stand um, and pray in the synagogues is, is not, the root is not agape. Um, the root is philio, um, P-H-I-L-E-O, philio. L-E-O? Uh, L-E-O. 
This is also a verb, um, a Greek verb. And this word holds in Greek a, lo a little different meaning. So whereas agape is the highest good, and although agape is not used often in classical Greek, it, it's not used like for everyday love. Um, philia would be used more like love between friends, um, that affectionate love, not like a sexual love, which would be eros, which is not actually in the Bible um, as, that, as that Greek word, but, but it, like a attraction love, like between friends type thing. Um, and so we have this, this other type of love that's being described. And we see it again in Matthew chapter 10, verse 37. These are like negative sort of loves. It's not good to love too much or something. 37? 37. So chapter 10, verse 37. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worry, worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. Thank you. So this here is also the filio uh, type of love that's being described. So whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy, worthy of me. Um, so this isn't that same type of like sacrificial love or doesn't seem like it like the sacrificial love because it doesn't necessarily have a negative context like, which i think sometimes does in english yeah um but seeking like the well-being of others it doesn't have it to the same extent that would be would um. be used here any thoughts so far on the kind of these different ways that love is being expressed. Or anything you know about these Greek words. I Sometimes there have been a lot about um, different studies on Greek words for love. Mm. Well, agape is the name of you know, uh, like a large community that, you know, where people live together and share, share things in love, I guess. So it does, it goes with that meaning. I have several good friends in the Boston area involved in agape communities. Um, so I can see why they chose that name. Mm -hmm. You know, they're trying to live selflessly together in a non-cult-like way, you know, <laughs> but um, just living in a community together. Let's go to Luke chapter 20, verse 46. This is another filio one. In the hearing of all the people, he said to the disciples, beware of the scribes who like to walk around in long robes and love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. I always wondered if like the best seats in the synagogue were up front or were they in the back? Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Now they'd be in the back. Uh, sure the <laughs> now, the back. <laughs> now they'd be in the back. Yeah. <laughs> But this, this type of love, to love to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces, the Greek word is not the agape here. Um, the Greek word that's being used is the phileo. There does seem to be a marked difference between you have to do. the way they're used, positive and negative. Yeah. Is phileo used in a positive way anywhere? Um, <laughs> it, yes. Let's go to John, um, John 12, 
it's a, it almost sounds like not a negative way, but like a falling short way. Yeah, yeah. But I think translating to English, it makes it sound more like you love after be noticed or whatever. Where are we? John. Uh, John chapter 12, verse 25. Yeah. So again, this one kind of carries the same. <laughs> yeah. almost emphasizes your point, Hannah. Yeah. Those yeah. who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. This one again is not agape. Um, this one again is phileo here. So <laughs> we've got this, these like different words that are we using. We've got agape and uh, agapeo, um, pao, which is like the verb for a version of agape. We've got a noun and a verb in Greek for love, which is like the highest level of love that's being used and it's encompassing ahava within it. And then we have this phileo, which in places, um, it seems like it's like, an, it's like a love that hasn't quite met the mark or something or like- Yeah, or used in the wrong- Or used, it has like the wrong know. item or wrong like, like you're not supposed subject. To yeah, you're not supposed to, you're right, you're not supposed to love, what was the last one? Um, praying publicly or whatever. Right. Calling attention. Like, to be, to love. You're not supposed the wrong to love that thing. at all. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's kind of a pondering, like, why they're using this yeah. word. Yeah. Um, and it does have a different meaning in Greek. And mm -hmm. so they're at different, I don't want to say levels, but like, a very noble love versus like the love that one would have between friends and between family and things. Yeah. But then we get to John chapter 21. And in this use of agape in phileo becomes a little more complicated um, in 21. Um, there's this interchange, chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. Mm -hmm. So this is after the resurrection. Um, and they, Jesus and Simon Peter are having a conversation with one another. Would somebody read uh, verses 15 to 17? When they finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. He said 17 also? Also 17. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. It's a lot of loves in there. Yeah, it is a lot of loves. Yeah. So how many versions do we have? We have two. <laughs> yeah. So we have two different versions here. And um, some some people say it's, um, I'll just tell you what the words are. And then I, you guys can figure out. Answers every, he says answers every time. Yes, Lord. Yes, Rabbi. You know that I'm your friend. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Will you read yours? Instead of love. When they'd eaten their meal, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, then John, which I think is son of John, do you love me more than these? Peter said, yes, Rabbi, you know that I'm your friend. Jesus said, feed my lambs. A second time, Jesus put the question, Simon, do you love me? Peter said, yes, Rabbi, you know that I'm your friend. Jesus replied, tend my sheep. A third time, Jesus asked him, Simon, then John, do you love me as a friend would? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked, do you love me a third time? So he said, you know everything, Rabbi. You know that I am your friend. Jesus said, feed my sheep. I've never seen that version before. Yeah, so I've never heard that version. That version actually ties closer to these different words we're getting in Greek. Hmm. So in Greek, there's two different words for love being used here. Um, when, and I'm going to insert the Greek words so you can hear it. When they had finished breakfast, John said to Simon Peter, Simon, 
son of John, do you agape me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I filio you. Oh. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time, he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you agape me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I filio you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, interesting. And Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him a third time, son, Simon, son of John, do you filio me? Yeah, as friend. Her, Peter oh. felt hurt because he said to him a third time, do you filio me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I feel you. you. So Peter never comes back with agape. <laughs> he never all. comes back with agape. But, <laughs> but in Aramaic, they're always saying rachma. <laughs> it's always rachma. <laughs> yeah. But the third time Jesus switches to filio? The third, the third time, time Jesus, Jesus switches. Which he does in mind too, or he yep. has a friend. Weird. So the third time Jesus. Oh. It's like he's letting him off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're <not laughs> Fine. Gonna... You just friend me then. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, so there's somewhat different ways that it kind of complicates it because what then does this filio mean? Yeah. And is there something deeper that's being said here? Or are they, they just using different words? But right, right. I don't know. What, what do you think? Well, whoever translated this one thought it was important. Used them differently. Yeah. 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 Well, we would think that Jesus you know, I guess we believe that Jesus' love for us is the meaning of agape, like yeah. no strings attached, no, you know, all-encompassing, holistic, whatever else we said agape meant, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Completely unselfish. Wanting the best for us at all times, no matter what we do, kind of. Like. Are we capable of that as humans? I don't know. We can Maybe we only can feel you. Yeah. Know. And it's also interesting, regardless of which one, the answer is feed my sheep. That's true. So whether you, you can work with the filio. Whether you want like <laughs> Jesus as a friend or Jesus <laughs> as like son of God, feed my sheep. Yeah. Whichever way you're yeah relating to jesus yeah. the wayans have a huh. word that i really like you all know it ohana ohana is your family but beyond your your biological family your oh, ohana are your friends that you gather in and uh you're you, anybody you can be anybody in your ohana but they talk about my ohana oh. and it, it's an all-encompassing word i just love it yeah we mentioned that before um or aloha, or, aloha. Oh, so we were asking I wrote last down week of what's the meaning of like aloha it. to me it's a greeting i don't know i don't know why that much it's, to me aloha, <laughs> aloha is hello how are you blah 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 ohana is is more encompassing as as loving or including everybody my ohana ohana my church circle be, be be my ohana. The church could be my, my neighbor down the hall could be part of my ohana. But my kids and my husband that's my ohana. Ohana is a very big word, meaning family, and y'all are huh. family. I just crucified the Hawaiian language too. <laughs> they kill me for doing that. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. The uh, aloha. I'll have to look into that. Ask ask John about that because uh, it's used so much and we don't know what it really means. Sure. Another, um, I was reading one commentator on this and one that thought this commentary either thought between using agape and filio is that um, Peter is trying to emphasize that the relationship with Jesus because the relationship had been broken. Mm because Peter had turned away and denied oh, Jesus. Yeah, and yeah. so even though Jesus is saying, you, you agape, and um, oh. Peter's saying, I like I want this relationship. Like, I know I broke it. I am right. your friend. Right. And is trying to like yeah. emphasize that oh. piece of it too. Yeah. Would be a, so th there's a lot that can be, I think, pulled out of just this piece because of these different Hebrew or these different Greek words. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I've got a little note in my book. It says, yeah. against those who read great significance, they're referring to these passages, mm -hmm. yeah. into the two Greek terms translated love here. Oh. Writers in John's era, including John, often shifted words with the same meaning for the purpose of literary variation. Right. Oh. Yep. So just, just for so other, <laughs> other commentators say it's just That's not interesting. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. Thank you, Gretchen. Thank you, Hannah. So I've I've read commentators both ways. Commentators saying that um, it's just variation, like how we use different words to make it more interesting, and um, and other commentators have said these these are like experts writing Greek. They know what they're saying. They're mm -hmm. going to be using words that they mean that have meaning behind it. So I don't know. <laughs> I don't have an answer. <laughs> so those are the um, that agape root and then um, filio are the main ones. There's one other word for love that's used in the New Testament in Greek, um, but it is only used in the negative, which is kind of interesting. And um, that's astagas is the other word that's used. Um, it shows up in Romans. How do you spell it? How does that spell? A-S-T-O-R-G-O-S. -S -S. That's Greek. That's Greek. Greek. Yep. Where is it? It's the negative of um, stored word. Romans. Okay. And it is like um, store, store J means like a natural um, affection, like family love, like what the type of affection that a human being just has towards others, or the type of connection. So if you go to Romans uh, chapter 1, verse 31. Wow. <laughs> So and it's so it's only using this word for love in the negative as far as you do not have love. Um, so we have here um, not a nice list. <laughs> no, not at all. So starting in twenty eight, and since they did not see fit to acknowledge God, God gave them up to a debased mind and to things that should not be done. They were filled with every kind of wickedness, evil, and the evil, and covetousness, malice, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, craftiness, gossipers, flaunters, God-haters, insolent, haughty, boastful, inventors of evil, rebellious towards parents, foolish, faithless, heartless, ruthless. <laughs> so this is one of those, um, a story would be under that heartless would be the word. Mine just says no love. And nor, or no yeah, love. I have no love. Yeah. yeah. Um, there to be people with no love. And this um, is like that most basic love. So not only are we talking about a love that, or are we not talking about a love that's like the love that God has, um, but this, this is like just the fact that being a human being, you automatically love certain people or certain things and um because that's how we are in relationship with one another and to be without that is um how this word is used so the only two places romans 1 31 and then the other place is second timothy chapter 3 verse 3 Second Timothy. Second Timothy, chapter three, verse three. So, um, we have other words for love being used here. Oh, inhuman. Yeah. Inhuman is the word that's used <clears throat> in the. Internet. Which I, I find interesting that how it's translated because to absolutely carry no love at all would make one inhuman is how it's even translated. So 
So we've gone through Hebrew, we've gone through Aramaic, and we've gone through Greek tonight, and Hawaiian. <laughs> oh, <that looks> like <laughs> Hawaiian. <laughs> any any other uh, cultures or languages that you have that can add to the conversation on love? I come away with a feeling that it's it's used so indiscriminately in our current language. We could do better if we would take the time and energy to be more precise, but that's that's that is often in short supply as well. And I think one that's one of the reasons why like in English, we have the saying about that actions speak louder than words. Mm -hmm. And because uh, sometimes I think we're kind of lazy in English with our language. And we, we use language that indiscriminately, but even in Greek and Hebrew and Aramaic, the action of love is really important. And to act out that love to one another is one of the ways that we can emphasize the words that we are saying. thoughts on love. We do have a Bible project video that will kind of summarize and add a little more to this conversation. That, that chapter in Timothy really speaks of the people now to me. The chapter three, mm -hmm. people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, un ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pre pleasure rather than lovers of God. That's like a lot of the people right now to me. Yep. I agree, Carol. Maybe it's because I'm older and I'm just like quietly watching people. I don't know if I was always so um, looking at people in that way so much, but I just see so much of it more now, it seems like. I think a lot of that is in front of our face a lot more. Thanks to television, everywhere we turn, we see that image of people that you just described. It's not pretty. Yeah, and it's accentuated by social media and, and it's almost getting common that you, you want to be rude, you can be rude. That's totally acceptable. Mm -hmm. Yeah type of lack of love that is spoken of so little in the Bible because the other type is what's being emphasized more and more. It's also easy just with the way like our brains are structured, just the way the brain works, that we, we are we notice and remember the negative things more. And um, because it, which is, has been a safety thing for humankind throughout time. Because like, um, if there was a mountain lion, you would want to notice it right away because you would be in danger. But we live in a culture now where there's not a mountain lion around every corner or the possibility of a, a bison laying around the corner, <laughs> unless you're out at Teddy Roosevelt. Well. <laughs> then watch the lion and bison, <laughs> but not in general, um, being out. But yet the brain still notices and remembers those negative things more. So one practice, which I think um, 
the Bible emphasizes in that with the way that it emphasizes agape again and again and again and uses that more often is to emphasize to us as well. Um, try to maintain, yes. to turn our focus towards what are the good things. To notice something positive and to grab onto that because more often we, we might have, it's just like if you receive a um, criticism, you could have 10 compliments and one criticism, and all you remember um, at the end of the day is the criticism. And um, so how do you turn that and notice places, and maybe homework for the next week, yeah. notice where you see agape, or at least um, phileo happening. And uh, we'll start our next class with where you notice that. It could be personal life. It could be in general society. Um, bonus points if you see it on TV. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might take a lot, of, a lot more watching than I have time for. But <laughs> <laughs> Like in the news? <laughs> so. But this brings new meaning to that passage in Philippians. Philippians 4.8. You know, that fam another a famous list, but the list, Paul's list of the good things to be thinking about. Mm -hmm. It's like a whole other context for it. So that's a meaty bone to chew on for the week. Yeah. Thank you. Notice homework. Notice agape. Notice agape this week. And um, keep reading your Jesse Tree readings if that's been helpful. And we've got, it's a just a little over, a little under five minutes for our Bible project video. I'm going to start that so that John can get home before it, it ices out there. <laughs> Everybody should be at home now, so it'll be nice and safe. There are fewer people on the road. That's true. That's the true. fewer you there can... are, the the better off you are. You can slide all the whole way home now. <laughs> if you've heard of Jesus, you probably know about one of his famous teachings called the Golden Rule. Do to others what you would want them to do to you. And this, actually, is a restatement of something else that Jesus said, that the meaning of life is to love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's really beautiful, but what does he mean exactly by the word love? It's an unclear word in English, because you can love your mom and you can love pizza. And if the word love means the same thing in both of those cases, your mom's gonna feel real bad. So what did Jesus mean in his language? Well, first of all, this love your neighbor phrase is a quotation from the Hebrew scriptures where the word for love is ahava. However, the language Jesus spoke and taught in from day to day it was a cousin language of Hebrew, that is Aramaic, in which the word for love is rachma. But then, as Jesus' followers spread his teachings around the world, they translated them into Greek using the word agape. But here's what's fascinating. The earliest followers of Jesus who wrote the books of the New Testament in Greek, they didn't learn the meaning of agape by looking it up in ancient dictionaries. Rather, they looked to the teachings of Jesus and the story of his life to redefine their very concept of love. So one time, Jesus was asked about the most important command in the Jewish scriptures. And he first quoted from the ancient prayer in the Torah called the Shema. Love the Lord your God with all of your heart. So love for God is the most important thing. But then Jesus quickly followed up by saying another command from the Torah was also the most important, to love your neighbor as yourself. So which is the most important, loving God or loving your neighbor? Jesus' answer is yes. To ask the question means you don't get his point. For Jesus, they are two sides of the same coin. Your love for God will be expressed by your love for people and vice versa, they're inseparable. And so this makes it clear that for Jesus, agape love is not primarily a feeling for someone else that happens to you, like our phrase, I fell in love. For Jesus, love is action. It's a choice that you make to seek the well-being of people other than yourself. Jesus also went on to teach that genuine love for God and others means seeking people's well-being without expecting anything in return, especially from people who are in difficult situations who can't repay you even if they wanted to. According to Jesus, this kind of generous love reflects the very heartbeat of God. And he took this even further. Jesus said that the ultimate standard of authentic love is how well you treat the person that you can't stand. Or in his words, you shall love your enemy and do good to them expecting nothing 
nothing in return. For Jesus, this kind of enemy-embracing love imitates the very character of God himself. Now, we wouldn't be talking about Jesus still today if he had only said things like love your enemy. This is how he actually lived. Jesus was constantly helping and serving the people around him in very practical and tangible ways. And he consistently moved towards poor and hurting people who couldn't benefit him in return. He showed love for the forgotten ones, the people who usually fall through the cracks. And when Jesus eventually marched into Jerusalem, he made himself an enemy of the leaders of his people by accusing them of hypocrisy and corruption. But then instead of attacking his enemies to overthrow them, he allowed them to kill him. Jesus died for the selfishness and corruption of his enemies because he loved them. After Easter morning, Jesus and then his followers claimed that it was the power of God's love for the world that was revealed in Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. As the Apostle Paul put it, God demonstrated his own agape for us in this. While we were still sinners, the Messiah died for us. Or in the words of the Apostle John, God's own agape was revealed when he sent his one and only son into the world so that through him we could have life. And for John, then, this leads naturally to the conclusion, beloved ones, if that's how God has loved us, then we ought to show love for one another. So Christian faith involves trusting that at the center of the universe is a being overflowing with love for his world, which means that the purpose of human existence is to receive this love that has come to us in Jesus and then to give it back out to others, creating an ecosystem of others-focused, self-giving love. And that's the New Testament meaning of agape love. There you have it. Before we sign off, I have a totally unrelated question for Carol. But okay. please listen first. Don't sign yeah. off. Okay. Well, thank you all for joining. Next week, we will look at um, joy, is our last word. And, um, and so go out and notice agape. <laughs> okay. Yeah.